Talk Show. Recorded live. Okay, Frank. Fantastic. Well done. Yeah. Okay, I'm back on. And let me uh, get to the... Um, let me get to the board here. And make sure that we're starting. So they should have uh, me back on now, so I am on as host. And, um, okay, I'm going to have to get up here. All right, one moment. Okay. Um, Frank, if you want to, there, we may have some new folks on. If you want to just go through a little bit of a background while we're yep. all checking this out, that would be great. Okay, so we're recording. We're ready to go. Oh, I know. Um, do we have Gerald on? He's our backup recorder, but. Um, Gerald, do we have you on? I I miss that, Terry. Um, do you want someone with a backup recorder? Yeah. Yeah, someone with a backup recorder, just to be sure. Because I I did hear the talk show come up when you came back in, so I was yes, just thinking maybe. Yes, it did. It, it did come back up, and it looks like we are now live. Yes, recording. Excellent. All right. Well. Well, let me start, and thank you so much. And look, uh, te technical issues happen all the time. So, um, look, thank you all who are on the call. Welcome. Um, this is the uh, regular weekly Eucadia talk show where we get to share some of the latest research and undertakings of what we're doing with uh, Eucadia and with the uh, canon law and with helping people in their matters. And so again, I, I thank everyone who's come on to the call. I, I wanna start, and I'm gonna get some, to some background, and we have had actually some fantastic research come in the last few days on the areas of executor, estate, uh, the trustee, SESTA KV, and even more understanding of what exactly is going on in the, in the courts. But I kind of wanted to start, if, if uh, everyone doesn't mind, with just a, a little story about how, I guess, how life is a funny, and the divine has a funny way of, of sometimes teaching us information. Um, it, learning doesn't always come, well, not for me anyway, it doesn't always come from the side of uh, sharing and positive. <clears throat> Quite often it comes from when people uh, are un, uh, putting you under attack when people are throwing lemons at you, um, when people are saying nasty things, sometimes when that happens, it actually causes you, or if you're open to it, cause you to go back and back to the first principles of not the nasty names and the nasty things, but what the basic question they were raising was all about. And in a moment, you'll see that's exactly what has helped us lead to some better understanding of things like executor, estate, the concept of SESA KV, and even more insight into what is exactly going on in the courts. But um, before I get to the story, just quickly, um, with the time we've got available, and because we ran a little bit over, um, for the next hour, I'm just going to give you the updates and share with you what we've uh, encountered. And then after that, I really want to see that we've got a good hour to answer any questions and in particular, if you find this information useful, to talk in practical terms with people's practical issues on how it might be applied. So that's roughly about two hours. So I hope all of you can, can stick around for that. But the story I was going to use was one that happened actually at Christmas time. And it happened uh, probably over 20 years ago when I was living in a city, Melbourne, Australia. And there's a big 
department store there called Maya. And out in Swanson Street, this particular street, uh, and Melbourne, the wisdom of Melbourne designed these car spaces, but the streets were so wide when they created Melbourne that they actually were able to put a single car space uh, in, a, in a line, like row after row, uh, that a car can park, literally in the middle of the road. So what happens is that you can go from either side and park into this parking space. <clears throat> so you can imagine at Christmas time, people are going after parking spaces like um, their life depended on it. And uh, being as I was um, at that age, I think it was even more than 20 years ago, um, looking to get Christmas presents and go to Maya, I saw a parking space. Now, as I drove in, someone else drove in from the other side. So that literally half my car was in and half their car was in from either, um, either side. Because of the way we had stopped and he wasn't going to move and I wasn't going to move, uh, we basically stopped one line of traffic from either end of the road. And because it was Christmas time, this, this traffic kept building up and building up and building up. And we, I, I, I think I was there for, well, it seemed like I was there for an hour, but I think I was probably only there for a few minutes. But in that time, you know, we basically stopped traffic. And after this seeming eternity, he actually got out of the car. And I thought, well, this guy, and he, he was big, he was not a small fellow, I thought he was going to get out and basically come across and threaten me or hit me, but he got out of the car, he came to my window and I didn't get out, he, I finally got out when he got to the car and I'm, my adrenaline's running, and instead of him throwing some um, punch at me or, or threatening me, he said, this is crazy, let's, let's toss for it, so toss in Australia means just throw a coin and do it, you know, whoever wins, whoever wins, and I, I thought, he sort of thought, this is crazy, but then I, I said yes. I mean, it seemed to me a moment of logic in a moment of, of, of basically two men lining up to hit each other. Well, I, I actually lost the toss. I lost the coin. I said heads, and I think it well, clearly came up tails. So I, I backed down. I shook his hand, got in the car. People are tooting their horns. Everyone's angry, and then I drove off. Well, it was probably about another 10 minutes or more that I, it took me to basically go around the block and there was no car park, there was no car parks. I came back around the block and I couldn't believe it, but literally two par uh, parking spots down from where I had had this war was this guy standing there like a bullfighter telling other people to basically go away and as soon as he saw my car, he waved at me to come in and park. So I drove in and, and, and I parked. And when I got out, he said, because you were so respectful in accepting that you had lost, I'd been waiting here for 10 minutes because the car two down from you went almost immediately. Yeah. And I looked at that, and, it, and that stuck with me my whole life, that story. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that I haven't been that same character driving my car full bore into a car park. I do it all the time. I mean, I'm not Lily White in the last few weeks in pointing out issues about executors and estate, I have been on the offensive. I have raised it. And as a result, people at the other end who are defending that, people who are pushing that, uh, have gone on the offensive and made things personal. But there is always a lesson out of this. And I guess the lesson here is that sometimes knowledge comes to us when we least expect it and from the, the least angles. And you'll see tonight when we talk about the knowledge we've got from executives and, and administrators. There is one thing I want to qualify though, and I think it is important because I think this is added to it and it is added to the, the, the hysteria, if you like, or the aggression, if you like, or the, the negativity, if you like. And, and it is this, that the old saying, you know, if patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel. And if that's true, then really the quoting of scripture, the using of scripture, is in a way the last desperate attempt of wicked deceivers. And I don't know how many times I've seen people use scripture to defend what was an immoral act or what was a wicked attack or what was effect effectively uh, an unfinished or, or an incomplete um, 
idea. And I think because of that, that has added fuel to the fire. And I didn't fully appreciate that. That when I was raising issues about executors, what ended up happening was that instead of it being an argument of ideas, the merit of ideas, it became, uh, in, without me realising, in a battle of good and evil. Well, <clears throat> it's easy to claim that these things are evil or that I'm working for Satan. It's easy to take my family history and say that he is a Jesuit or he, he, he supports the, the Roman cult. But it only works if people suspend their belief, switch off logic, switch off being rational and forget basic things that I have already shared with you, like One Evil. No one can go to the site one, one-evil.org and read what I've said there and logically come to the conclusion that I am a fan of the Roman cult. I mean, it's absurd. But, you know, when, when people press our buttons, then sometimes they do stop us thinking in rational terms. So I want to separate those two things. If what has happened in the last few weeks, I would not be sharing with you some incredible research. So in a sense, in the bigger scheme of things, it's going to be a blessing. But I do want to separate this issue when people are claiming things and using things and not allowing logic. <clears throat> Look, anyone that is working in the truth movement, anyone that's working on things to try and help people, it should be on the basis of help. There's too many people in prison. There's too many people who lost their homes. There's too many people right now who are freezing literally to death that need help. So with that in mind, I don't care about bruised egos. I don't care about being offended. I ultimately don't really care what people think of me. But I do care when good people are sent down the wrong path or are confused or are deceived in the process. That is what concerns me. Not me. What concerns me is what people uh, need. And right now they need clarity. They need logic. They need reasons to understand what's going on. Okay, well that's enough of a stump speech. Let's get right into it. Now I'm going to refer to some pages on uh, One Heaven, uh, O-N-E-Heaven, that updates some of the information uh, that has come as a result of uh, what research we've done. And I'm going to ask all of you who are on the call and all who listen to this call that the first link uh, is going to be an update on positive law. So again, the website is one-heaven.org. That's O-N-E-heaven.org. And when you call up that website and you click through the home page, and you go to the opening page, I'd like you to click on Positive Law. And when you click on Positive Law, I'd like you to go to Article 99, which is E-State. So I'll just let people get to that, and I'll just read, out, read that out again so everyone is, is, is clear. So we're on one-heaven.org, O-N-E-heaven.org, and we're going to Positive Law, and we're going to Article 99, estate okay so I hope everyone's getting there or, or if they're not they'll they'll get there later on or I'm going to read some of these out and I'm going to stop and I'm going to explain because this is the dynamite stuff so we've been talking about estate we've been talking about executives we've been talking about trustees we've been talking about sister KV and there's all these different things out for example part of the revelation is that the role the office of executor like many of the offices of the, uh, of the administrators of the Roman cult, are vacant. We don't have uh, trustees appointed to administer our Sester KVs um, 364 days out of the year. Well, that's actually a really important piece of knowledge. And I thank the people who pioneered the executor letter for that knowledge. Extremely important to know that. Happen. 